Your 20th kids book. Did you ever write this much at school? Um, I definitely wrote stories at school. I don't think I had the kind of focus. At... I really loved stories. I love telling stories, but I think I was just too... I just wanted to get stuff down. I wasn't focused enough, so it's taken a lot of time to... I'm still a little bit like that, to be honest. Yeah, Christmas Stories Carol, very clever title. My favourite book of all time is A Christmas Carol. Oh, it's of fantastic. All time. Yeah, it's amazing. Actually, this was all inspired by just the title. It was written in my note when I've got loads of notes of, like, ideas for books. Yeah. And this, I've had A Christmas or a Carol written down in my notes for like seven years. So I kept coming back to it and just thought there's something in that. And um, yeah, and so it just felt like the right Well, the time. Christmas Taurus was always going to end up here. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I, I wrote The Christmas Taurus, I think, about nine years ago. It was yep. just after my, our, our eldest son was born. And I never thought it would turn into, four, well, four novels. I think we're on two picture books now. And yeah. There's a stage show coming next year again. It's just grown into this. It's just taken over my life, really, <laughs> in in all the best ways. You know, I love Christmas and um, and had this obsession with dinosaurs growing up. So it's kind of the perfect project for me. And I write music for it as well. And so, it's yeah, it's kind of everything that I love in one in one project. The Christmas Saurus to kids' books is like becoming what Michael Bublé is to Christmas. <laughs> Isn't it? it is the Michael Bublé of the Christmas kids. Well, I mean, there's no more compliment that. than that. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we got William. We have William, not just William, but your William. So tell us about little William. So William is so William is the Christmas Saurus's best friend, yep. and they William is in all of the Christmas Saurus adventures. Uh, in this one, there's a magical copy of a Christmas Carol yep. that William gets from this mysterious library, and Ebenezer Scrooge escapes from a Christmas Carol, da, da, da. and he's trying to humbug Christmas. So it's down to the Christmas Saurus, <laughs> William, Santa, and all of the Christmas Saurus gang to try and get Ebenezer Scrooge back into his yeah. copy of his book. So he's he on the loose. He's on the loose. Oh my goodness! It's a great. That's a fantastic it's idea. T- t- it's been really, really. Fun. It's been really fun playing with a character like Scrooge that we all know and love and hate. Brilliant and, character. Um, and you know, being able to. It's such an honour actually being able to play with him amongst all of my own characters. Yeah. Um, it's been really good fun. I, I never get tired of any Christmas Carol, Muppet Christmas Carol, Scrooge, Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so good, isn't it? And if you read the original Dickens book. Every paragraph is like a work of art. It is. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's got the most incredible opening, I think, of, of all time. And I, I actually I toyed with the idea of maybe just doing more of a retelling of it with Mike, like the Muppets Christmas Carol. Yeah. And then I actually just thought it'd be really fun to kind of just take him out of his world and put him into the world of the Christmas Auras and have him on the loose trying to run around. And I also like the idea. So in the book, the dad, Bob, he reads A Christmas Carol and gets to a certain point and then doesn't finish the book. And it's at the point where Scrooge hasn't resolved his story yet. Yeah. So he's still very much, he's still very Scroogey. And it's at that point that he escapes. So it's it's almost like he, he needs to go back in to fulfill his journey. Yeah. I just really like that idea that, you know, you could take someone at so, a certain point of their story and then be a certain way because they haven't lived their whole story yet. What about other characters escaping from other fairy tales? That'd be fun, yeah, wouldn't not? it? We keep going. Yeah. They'll bump into each other somewhere. Yeah. You know, it's like the multiverse. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And um, William wants to be in the choir, but he's too scared to put his hand up. This is interesting, isn't it? So, because because he loves Christmas so much, you think, well, hang on a minute. If he loves Christmas, where's it going? So he's got to have his Grinch moment. Mm. So he does have his Grinch moment. How much do you want to say about this? Yeah, well, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but yeah, I think that is absolutely it. It's, that's the the kind of I can absolutely relate to that. You know, I, I grew up loving singing, but I'm I'm a bit of an introvert and I don't ever put myself <laughs> forward. Well, you'll know from, you know, knowing me over the years, but I, I'm I'm absolutely not that confident. And I wanted to kind of put that into William. He loves Christmas and loves singing and desperately wants to have this solo in the choir, um, but just doesn't have the confidence to do it. And of course, another kid who is super confident gets that part and seeing him, you know, have this internal kind of torment and resentment and then the guilt of feeling those feelings is absolutely something I can relate to all throughout my whole life I think. It's like the little boy who goes the naughty little boy who goes around the school with a big pin and he pops a balloon and he pops an inflatable and then he pops an airbed and his headmaster says well look hang on a minute you've let the balloon down you've let the airbed down but most of all you've let yourself down (laughs) Because <laughs> that's what he feels like, doesn't he? Because he he feels like oh, you know, he's disappointed with himself, mm. and then he blames it on Christmas for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, he almost doesn't, you know, he almost doesn't want Christmas to happen. Yeah. Um, which is the kind of you know a bit of the the trigger for the events that then then follow. But also, he feels like he's letting his dad down. You know, he's yeah. his dad was in the choir when he was young and wants to you know you know live in in uh, fulfill his dad's kind of uh, uh, shoes. Um. So yeah, that's and that's something you know I absolutely can relate to. I think I write a lot of my books really for my own kids as well I've got three young boys 
So I, I always have them in my head when I'm writing and mm. they kind of become the characters for me. So are you on the clock then? Because obviously as they continue to get older, these this kind of book will be less relevant. So will you change your writing style to continue to um, to satisfy the immediate domestic market, i.e. your house? <laughs> yeah. Or will you stay where you are and, and they move on? I don't know because I feel like... I Because I write picture books for younger kids, um, for two to five-year-olds. This is middle grade, so it's seven to 12-year-olds. And I also have, I've got a, um, a trilogy that I write with my wife for young adult. Um, but I feel like middle grade is really my kind of my sweet spot where i find yeah. that i naturally write flow where you flow yeah and just i can explore deeper ideas but it's also really fun and yeah, have yeah. the you know fun about writing about christmas and dinosaurs but also i love you know my son my eldest is 9 so he's right the sweet spot for these books and i love the conversations that we have they're really deep and meaningful and you know and i i love that i get to kind of explore those same ideas in my books but also on the surface it's a story about christmas and santa and dinosaurs but underneath that there's you know much deeper kind of yeah messages. it's cool man it's really cool tom fletcher we're talking to tom from mcfly about a christmas source carol his 20th children's book unbelievable the review is in vatos yes so our nine-year-old um tom reviews all the books on the show all the kids books on this show okay um <clears throat> now slight spoiler alert because she's reviewed some of yours before and she absolutely adores the Christmas Horus. I mean, okay. she came, first thing she saw, and it wasn't even that obvious in our hallway when she came home from school. She goes, is that, is that a Christmas Horus book? Is that a new Christmas Horus book? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Uh, but then she did, she had a little moment because she's had, she had quite, she gets paid now. Right, Two pounds wow. per review. Great, Okay. <laughs> I'm not. Which she's so proud of. <laughs> we all yeah, think she's such a skinflint. <laughs> two way, pounds, it's two pounds. She's, she's been doing it for years. She only just started getting paid about three weeks ago. Um, I'm not 100% convinced she's quite finished this one yet. Oh, so wow. I'm wondering if I should, I should actually... Delay payment. Well, either delay payment <laughs> yeah. or just, you know, £1.50. Half at the £1.50 end. For, for three quarters of a book. Yeah. But she, she, look, it's not going to be a bad review because she loves your books. Oh, well, that's good. I'm you ready glad. for this? Here we go. When Daddy said he had another book to review, I was like, another one? And then I saw It's the Christmas Horus. And brilliant! I loved the Christmas Horus. And the Naughty List, and the Winter Witch, and the Christmasaurus Carol is just as good. In fact, even better. I love how you think, phew, there's nothing bad going to happen to them. And then, ah, something bad happened to them. She's good, isn't she? That's is brilliant. That is the Are you best. Sure, she's you? nine. Are you sure it's not Caroline putting on the kid's voice? Come on. <laughs> I haven't seen Mary for years. Yes. Yeah, Mary talks like that. <laughs> yeah, she's very much into yeah. the darts nowadays. Yeah. Well, it's going well, isn't it? She's, uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's passing my thanks. On. Thank Ain't you very much. I think it's that. the first review I've had. Oh no, it's not the first. Actually, my nine-year-old, I gave it to him to read over the summer. He proofread it, and uh, he had like the early copy to spot. What notes did he give you? I, I get a lot of notes from him. What, what kind? Give us a flavour. Well, he gets really hung up on the details where, you know, the inconsistencies that you might spot, like someone would leave a door open and you yeah. haven't, in the next bit, it's the illustration shows oh, the door. He's a continuity shut. guy. Really, yeah, he gets really focused on those. <laughs> so I had to go back and correct them, yeah. But he's also brilliant at coming up with like, bigger ideas, but he gets upset if I don't take his ideas on board. Good. As Quite right, too. Yeah. All right, so you are the day job is coming back to bite you on Monday the twenty third of October. So we have a tour, a power yeah. to play. We have a twenty how many twenty three day tour starting on the twenty third. That's nice, isn't it? Mofly.com. How are you feeling about that? Are you are you match fit? I oh, can't wait. Well you, you know we there? love what we do. You're Playing live up? is the, the Yeah, and these are smaller shows. These are like sweaty rock venues that I feel like really suits our new album. So we're really, really excited. We're in rehearsals at the moment and um I mean, we love it so much. It's just the best part of being in a band. Yeah, and you do give great gigs. There's no, you were brilliant at Carfest. You were we better than Carfest. ever before. I, that felt like a really special one, actually. It you was were. just something about the atmosphere at the last it's one. That different, was just wasn't it? Really different. It was amazing. Different vibe, man. Different vibe. You've got to change things up and down and yeah. all around. So you'll be finishing your tour 
Um, end of November is beginning of December is it slipping uh, in December and, uh, yeah November I think alright so you'll November. be full on Christmas by the time you finish your full tour full on Christmas yeah oh. I mean Christmas starts pretty early for, for me anyway. do you have any plans that you can tell us about I know it's private we are but... uh, well we have a pretty traditional Christmas and we work because of you know things like the Christmas Aurus we you know we work a lot over Christmas but then I'm going on a cruise with the family are you actually yeah, I know you're talking about cruises you going, going on a cruise you've yeah. been on a cruise before I've been on a, a couple of cruises before all, only Disney cruises <laughs> uh, my wife does the, the podcast with Disney Travel Company and I get to be her plus one which is the best uh, the best perk um so you have to say they're great they are genuinely amazing though i did the first one without the kids just me and my wife and i it was just it blew my mind i love you know star wars where are you gonna go which what kind of cruise you're gonna go around the caribbean we did one um around um europe around the med last year they're just amazing fun they're so much fun i could and i'd never done one before and it's just so brilliant do you have um any plans for christmas fasos not at the moment but you never know oh what is this? You do? Yeah, he's, you have he's secret. Huge, he's made a massive <laughs> error. No, I haven't. You, uh, I, think, okay. I think we'll just be at home. What? Come round. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, how about presents for you and Giovanna? Because Tasha and I, we don't do presents anymore. And it was a trap for a while. She said, let's not do presents this year. And for the first year, she bought me presents. And she made did. me feel terrible Oof. for the rest of the year. Oh, that's bad, isn't The it? opposite of brownie points. How is it that when you're in the doghouse, the doghouse lasts for ages, ages, but when you do something great, your brownie points last for about a second, if that. Yeah. What's that about? Sometimes you try and spend them immediately. What's that about? Tom? And they've already expired. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I do, we, I've done the same. Actually, me and my wife, we say we're not getting presents. I think I'm more guilty of it than her, where I, I we say we're not going to do much, and then I go out and do something. But I'm, more, I'm quite last minute, though, so it's, I, I never, you know, I I'm not very organised, so I don't plan in advance. Yeah. So there's the stress of the last minute. Yeah. Purchase. And um, what about the kids? What do they? What kind of stuff do they like? Because it's nice to get kids stuff that they're going to use, isn't it? You know, I mean, you know, skateboards, roller skate. I mean, stuff that that they're going to do things with. They're yeah, going to move I, with it. Is what I'm saying. I suppose. The thing is, I love. I love the same stuff my kids love, mm. so, and I love toys. So it's I. It's an excuse for me yeah. to have the things right, that I really good. want. This is good. Okay, so let's get in the time machine. Yes. Let's go back about twenty years. Yeah. Let's get the Argos catalog out, mm-hmm. right? And think we have a grown-ups budget, but we're a kid. Yeah. What are we buying? Well, I'm, weirdly, it's all the same stuff that's back now. So when I was a kid, it was Ninja Turtles and yeah. the Ghostbusters, and and it's all the same stuff. And Doctor Who, my son's obsessed with Doctor Who. So we've, you know, his whole Christmas list last year was Sonic screwdrivers from Doctor Who. Right. And I was just like, yes. Because Eli's big into the ones, you know. So right, the really, ha- Harry Potter ones. Harry Potter and ones. There's yeah. so many different ones you can get. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've got like... most of them. Have you actually? Well, I had a lot of them before I had kids, and now my kids have just t- t- stolen them. What big Harry Potter fan? Massive Harry Potter fan. You know. You have you got a rack? The real... I, I, no, they're just kind of you know. You get one racks. Yeah, I know. I, I really should I'll get, get one. one. I'll, but get you one just... I'll, get you, I'll get you one rack. I can oh, do thank that. You very much. And lightsabers. We've got a lot of lightsabers. I've just I've got the wall hanging things for the lightsabers. Just haven't put them up yet. Are there different lightsabers? Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, you can do the best. You can build your own like custom ones, which are just amazing. What? Yeah. Oh, you got to get on the lightsabers. Because the first time they came out. You know, you think, well, how are they going to do the bit where it goes whoosh, whoosh, yeah, you know, from the handle? And that was an extendable telescopic plastic kind of a situation, yeah. which was okay. Mm. But have they come on now? What? No. So now you can like you can screw the so you can have it just the handle, yeah, or you can screw in the bit and then it kind of lights up. Right. But the best thing is with the new ones, you can the kyber crystals, which is like at the heart of the lightsaber, you can dismantle your lightsaber and, and choose your kyber crystal and put nice. it inside nice. which is but you think with them msg not money of sodium glutamate do you know the msg sphere the u2 sphere yeah, yeah. In Las uh-huh. Vegas? you think with that they'd come up with something that was a bit like a proper lightsaber that was well there is one so do you, do you know the the there's the star wars hotel that i don't think is open, open anymore but the, the like did immersive you experience i did go and stay there which is unbelievable was it yeah and they had one there as part of the kind of not that you could have but it was as part of the show which was a real one that extended and it blew, i mean the reaction when it came out was just unreal yeah that was amazing yeah i mean in the dark if you are actually blowing into a didgeridoo people <laughs> might think it's a lightsaber but it's not yeah. <laughs> it's not because it's the same sound isn't it, is it it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's similar it's a little bit more electronic mm. a synthesized didgeridoo in the star wars hotel did was 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 the um, was Chewbacca like was he the Maitre D and things like that? You're literally running around with stormtroopers and Chewie. And get out of here! Yeah, it's unbelievable. And it, it closed down. It's, it's closed, Why is that? Why did that work? I don't know. It was it was amazing. Who does someone to stay in the Star Wars Hotel? Yeah. Wow. 
Was I would f- live there. It was, it was unreal. How many stars would you have given the Star Wars <laughs> Hotel? Just uh, all the stars. as many, all the stars. <laughs> All of the stars. <laughs> well, All for right. a start, if, you know, if you're a fan, you're going to live in any of the un- in, in the world of what you're a fan. Tom, of. you can sense that we're descending into nonsense. I now. know we are. Yeah. Uh, Tom Fletcher, a Christmas tour as Carol is out now, and it's another crack and read. Well done, Tom. Oh, I should say, I have a, a, a show that's uh, opening. T- uh, you opened yesterday called a monster. There's a monster in your show. It opens in Watford. Oh, I'm gonna admit, um, I got that down somewhere. Yeah, it's touring up until June next year. It's based on one of my kids' books. I, I was, Tom's, who's in your book picture book series, made its debut as a brand new musical show called There's a Monster in your show premiered yesterday at the Watford Palace Theatre before heading off to more than 50 further venues around the UK the latest info can be found at monsterinyourshow.com there we go you're all over it I'm going to see it, it today I can't wait I'm going He's to see it with my kids all today all over it great alright thank you so much thank you for having me you're the best Merry Christmas Aurus Merry Christmas Aurus to all of you